So folks, we apparently now own a farm. And I thought I'd give you supporters a first look. And hello, Maya. Hi. We picked up Maya from her friend's place. She's stayed up here for the weekend. So, and Kira's here with me. And Bianca's at work. So it's just, um, we came up to get the keys today. And there's our nice big double bay shed. And there's a little carport at the end there. A couple of large water tanks. I'm not exactly sure how many litres. A little storage shed. A couple of tanks that get pumped up from the dam. That's their dog shed. They had a number of um, chocolate labs. And over there we just have a couple of little sheds. A few folks who are watching this on our Aquaponics YouTube channel, just a quick heads up, these videos won't be posted here forever. It will revert back to an Aquaponics only channel and backyard farming. All their farm content will be over on our Bits Out The Back Homestead channel. So as soon as we uh, finish the purchase and all that sort of thing, that's where the farm content will be. So if you want to keep in touch with us there, all you have to do is jump on over using the link in the description or one that pops up here and subscribe and hit that notification bell and all should be hunky-dory and you'll get notifications when videos are posted there. Yes, magpies, they will. So anyway, that's enough of me yabbering on, back to the main video. And I'll give you a bit of a look around the back of the sheds. Took the old CX up today because we don't pick up the BT until next week. Uh, the farm comes with 16 to 20 guinea fowls and two chickens. We have chook one and chook two. No idea where they're nesting whatsoever. So we're gonna have to look around for them. Uh, the pig sty, they've probably, oh, pig sty, the pig yards are pretty much all, um, yeah, just have left all the little shelters and things like that. We're fine with that. That's the old feed locker, which is an old freezer. And there's all just bits and pieces in here that they've left. A lot of it we can use, but we were, we were told, oh crap, I didn't see these. Oh, I'm always worried there's going to be manky manky stuff left in there. Um, there there's, I think they used to have their pool pump and bits and pieces in there. There's some gecko food crawling up the wall. Uh, but it is going to be a bit of a job to um, tidy this place up, but that's all good. Oh, all these sheds have circuit breakers too in them, which was really good. Around here, we have an anaerobic smell. Mmm, we have a real full on anaerobic smell, but we have a polycarbonate little greenhouse here that I'll be able to do something with with shade cloth. We have another fridge, closed. Hello, lady. And another shed uh, with an old 1970s table in it. We used to have something similar. So little bits of racking here and there. We do have a couple of polytunnels that need to be taken down. It's a little bit warm here to grow in under plastic, I think. So these guys will be getting retrofitted and I'm going to see if I can actually raise them up off the ground so we can have um, grow, uh, grow beds in here raised up. Uh, there was um, just masses of pumpkins in here from some of the early shots we saw. Hello lady, how are you? Oh, we still love you. We'll see if you got some food here in a tick. Um, yeah, so another one there. This is the Chook House. They had some really, really nice uh, nesting boxes on these as you can see the holes in the back walls and we were told that they were going to come with the place as well But they are no more. Um, she took them out. They're expensive nesting boxes And what do we got in there? Anything? No, I was hoping there might be some eggs in there, but there's no eggs So the chickens are obviously laying their eggs somewhere A little bit of bamboo over the back there And lots of dust baths all around the place so yeah, a decent size chicken run. Apparently they had no problems with foxes, so that's pretty good. Uh, that's the back paddock. Looking down to a dam underneath the burn pile. And yeah, this is just the back of the house paddock, nice and clear for a fire break. So all through there is nice and dry, ready to go boom. If we have a local fire, which I'm hoping we don't get. Irrigation pump, Brian's hooked it up to all these taps all around the place and yeah, they're all around the pig yard as well and as I said, they run from those two tanks over there. Those, that fridge has got nothing in it, we've already checked that. 
I didn't check in here for eggs though. Uh, I can't see where there's any eggs. Uh, this is one of the sheds. They've just pretty much all just left. So it's just all their packing boxes and bits and pieces. So I keep it closed so no chickens get trapped in there. Two large water tanks. Uh, how this is set up is water comes in from the house and also from that shed fills these guys. I think I may have mentioned it. Then they overflow onto that roof and then they top up in those tanks over there and then they overflow through that little bit of pipe coming out the side there. Yeah, the guinea fowl at the moment are all nesting in the tree above us. As you can probably see down there, or roosting I should say. Um, so this tree has been suggested that it possibly come down for a few different reasons. Uh, mainly because it continually interrupts the water flow into the house. And yeah, so something we're considering some solar panels and the shed. Again, bits and pieces have been left in here. Most of which is fine. They look like some camping equipment over there. Paints and tins with liquids in them. Um, as long as that's degrees or not something else and they're just paints. Um, yeah, I'm, and they're just paints. I'm pretty happy with that. And again, we have that um, circuit breaker isolator and <laughs> He got, he used to work um, something to do with the British military and when he moved out to Australia, uh, he brought that big air cylinder out as well. He used that just as an extra auxiliary air tank off his compressor. Um, I was hoping to get dad's gantry in here so we could at least have something to lift motors and things like that if need be down the line. But we have power points on all the walls. Um, this is his and hers, I think, as Bianca said last time. Um, she'll set up on one side and I didn't realise that door's open and um, yeah we'll have some stuff set up over on this side as well. We'll see if we can keep this closed somehow. Yeah I might get a, might see if I can get a bungee cord from the car or something and just try and keep that closed. Sledgy head, looks like some camping equipment. Some nice solid bits of metal I'll be able to play with. And another ironing board bench. And just around the side here, we have just tractor storage basically. And he's got a load of extra panels that came with the shed. He just left up there for us. But there's a spare door uh, for the sheds and some racking stuff there that he ta um, hasn't taken. So that'll all come in handy. He actually had a big, um, log carrier over there. It was a two part, um, you string you're basically uh, with a winch sling a log on the back section and the little uh, jockey segment at the front that you hook onto the back of a trailer or uh, tractor or four wheel drive and tow that which would have come in handy because there's a whole heap of, I don't know, we'll zoom in. There we go, there's a whole heap of logs up the back there that were tow, uh, brought up using that from down the power easement down the back of the property which is way down that way and there's a load of other ones down there as well that are ready to be dragged up. He just never got around to it. Uh, the diesel tank here, guess what? It has diesel in it. We don't know how much, but um, Daniel hopped up there today. And yes, there's definitely diesel in there. So that was interesting. Um, we'll have to see what sort of condition it's in. It didn't look that um, schmicko. There's a bit of a look at the property. Not as green as it was the first time. A couple of times we came up. That's for sure, very brown, but Apparently we're at the start of a drought. Uh, the dams though are still pretty much well full. Not totally full, but over um, two thirds full. And we have some nice shading for the Western sun, just to um, yeah, take a little bit of heat out of the house. And you can see this little bit they've added on here where the stairs were actually external. And this is the main issue we are having with the house and probably one of the reasons why we've got mouse issues. Look at that, and they've hit that with a line trimmer or something and left a hole down in there. Um, this is actually built, this is the slab is just underneath the edge of that um, board there, that uh, fibrous board there. So there, it's not raised off the ground whatsoever. And it's very easy for termites and bits and pieces to get in there. You can see this little bit of section here that's been cut out. That's the, um, the termite barriers down underneath that apparently. And we're going to get that pumped full. A little back deck. For the jack, we won't have to let jack in and out anymore. He can have free reign of the farm. So, yes. I'm surprised we haven't seen any guinea fowl. When we turned up this morning, they were all hanging around the place. 
they haven't seen one since we've been back. One since we've been back, so I'd say they're off there, um, out there hiding somewhere where it's nice and cool in the shade. So there you go, folks. There's a little bit of a tour. Um, yeah, we got to get going because it's what three o'clock. We're not going to get back to Brisbane until about eight o'clock tonight at this rate because I've got to do a few things to make sure those chickens are happy and um, look at around a few more things before we go. So whole sign off there. I do hope you're all well and happy. Thank you for the support, folks. You've actually helped make this happen uh, through the contributions over the years uh, because we've been saving up for it all along. But I'm going to say goodbye. Cheers, folks. You're going to say goodbye, girls? See ya. Bye. Bye.